The Alchemist. It's a 200 page novella written by Brazilian lyricist Paulo Coelho, and since its publication in 1988, it has reached the hearts and minds of many across the Western world, receiving many awards in its lifetime. But although it got a lot of praise, it also got a lot of backlash. So that begs the question, why am I doing a video on this book? Well, the answer... The answer is pretty embarrassing, not gonna lie. So last April, my former teacher made us read The Alchemist over the course of five to six weeks. Let's just say that after reading it, my class unanimously agreed that this book was the worst book in existence. In fact, in my class discord, they literally had a channel dedicated to hating on The Alchemist. So one day, sometime in September or October, while I was thinking about videos I could make, I had an idea. A terrible idea. And after three months of script writing, four months of drawing plus procrastination, and two hours of editing, here we are. Let me tell you the story of Santiago as he travels the Mediterranean and learns life lessons along the way. This is basically The Alchemist. So our story begins in Andalusia, a region in southern Spain. In the year of... we'll get to that. Here we meet Santiago, a 16 year old shepherd boy who was head over heels with a merchant's daughter. Ah yes, young love. But that night, while he was sleeping in a church near a sycamore tree, he gets a strange dream about a child who never shows up again in the story, taking his hand and taking him from Andalusia to the pyramids of Giza. He's had this dream for the past few nights and now he's like, well, this is weird, and heads towards Tarifa, the southern tip of Spain, the same village where he met the merchant's daughter. But he decides to visit the gypsy woman to see if she can interpret his dreams. And she says, I don't know what else to tell you. Can I have 10% of your treasure? So he goes out into the plaza and decides to go read on some bench, thinking to himself that there is no freaking way he's getting to the pyramids, let alone finding any treasure. And it is here where he meets an Arab man who introduces himself as Melchizedek, the King of Salem, who in case you didn't know is a character in the Christian Bible and the Jewish Torah, the high priest who blessed Abraham. And though the Bible and Torah never specifically mentioned where Salem is, many have speculated that Salem is Jerusalem, with its comparison to Zion in Psalm 76 verse 2. So after writing names of people Santiago knows in the sand, which thinking about it now must be very creepy, you know the idea of meeting some 40 something year old looking man with a beard writing the names of everyone you know and love without ever coming in contact with him and now you know that there's some stalker that's been following you all of your life? You're probably never going to sleep peacefully ever again. Anyway, he tells Santiago that it's his personal legend to visit the pyramids, which according to Melchizedek, is what that person most desires to accomplish in his or her life. So after selling 90% of his sheep and giving Melchizedek his remaining 10% the following day, he sets out on his journey to Egypt to find the treasure and complete his personal legend. Keep in mind that he's never left Andalusia in his life, but it's okay, as you'll find out soon enough, he has plot armor to the millionth power. After crossing the Strait of Gibraltar, Santiago arrived in Tangier, where he encountered his first roadblock. Santiago spoke Spanish, the locals spoke Arabic. While visiting a bar though, he meets a guy who also speaks Spanish, which Santiago immediately befriends. The Arab bartender yelled at them about something and they leave. Santiago gives the guy his money so that they can buy camels, but when they do, the young guy doesn't give it back. Ooh, look at this cool shiny sword and oh he's gone. So after contemplating his life for two hours, he looks at some rocks that Melchizedek gave him. Now keep in mind, these rocks aren't just ordinary rocks, they are rocks that can help you find omens, or things people look out for to predict future events. The following day, after helping out people setting up shop, Santiago noticed that even though he and the other merchants spoke separate languages, they could still communicate with each other without words, showing that kindness is the universal language of the world. Eventually, he comes up to some crystal shop run by a depressed merchant. You see, business had recently declined in Tangier, with most of it being moved to Ceuta in the east. So Santiago decides to help out the merchant in exchange for monies, 
The merchant was reluctant, but when Santiago's advice eventually got people to start buying more, Santiago's help was considered a positive rate on investment and he started working and living in the shop. Santiago would spend one year working in that shop. During that time, he learns more about the merchant, how he fears his personal legend of going to Mecca because once he completes it, there's nothing for him to live for. With this, Santiago felt disheartened but still determined to complete his personal legend. He doesn't even say goodbye to the merchant. Santiago just leaves. It is here we flash sideways to this Englishman who wants to become an alchemist. He is hoping to be an alchemist in Al Fayum. This alchemist had supposedly lived for 200 years and had supposedly discovered the Philosopher's Stone, a substance capable of turning base metals into gold or silver, as well as the elixir of life, a drink that grants the consumer immortality. So anyway, Santiago arrives at the caravan and off to Egypt they go. During the journey, Santiago and the Englishman begin to talk, where Santiago learns about alchemy as well as this amazing alchemist in Al Fayum. Eventually, they do arrive in the city, about 100 kilometers away from the pyramids itself. But terrible news arises when Santiago is told that they won't bring him to the pyramids due to the fact that there is an ongoing war with the Bedouin tribes. But that doesn't matter at the moment because literally on the first day that he's there, he falls in love with a young woman named Fatima. So, on the following day, Santiago, get this, asks her to marry him. Now, naturally, considering this is the first time he's ever talked to this woman, she gladly marries him literally that day. I guess it's just that easy then. One minute you see a girl, and the next minute you literally marry them. So now Santiago is married to Fatima, but now he's all conflicted and stuff and doesn't know whether or not he should continue his quest and complete his personal legend. Eventually, Fatima persuades him to go, and he leaves, continuing his journey to find the... Oh. Oh, so yeah, Santiago notices two hawks fighting each other and gets an epiphany. Do you know what this means? Uh, no. Well, you see, my unenlightened pleb, this little skirmish might look like it doesn't have any significance, but you see, these two birds are in conflict. You know something else that's in conflict? The Bedouin War. And these birds are fighting here, meaning that conflict is coming here, meaning that we're under attack. What makes you say that? Because omens, man! So he further relates this to the chief, saying that, I'm not from the desert, therefore I'm better than you, and my judgment is more superior. And the chief is like, I instantly believe everything you just said. So, Al Fayum spends the night preparing for themselves for a potential fight, and on the following day, the soldiers arrive and the battle commences. The home team wins, and Santiago leaves Al Fayum for the pyramids, finally being able to progress through his parcel at Never mind, he goes south and arrives at a tent, where he and the reader finally meet our title character, the Alchemist. So they talk about stuff and they plan to head out to the pyramids together on the following day. But when the Alchemist tells Santiago that it's time to go, Santiago is reluctant, but then the Alchemist tells him that his life will go really bad if he doesn't go right the second, and they leave. As mentioned before, the distance between Al Fayyum and the pyramids of Giza is about 100 kilometers or 62 miles. And after three days of walking, things went moderately well when three tribesmen came up to them and searched their possessions, but they eventually allowed them to pass. As they continue onward, they get stopped by even more tribesmen. They were apparently conversing with the enemy. The alchemist tells them that they were alchemists and didn't mean any harm. The Arabs believed the alchemist, but they didn't believe Santiago was one. The alchemist then decides to place a bet. In three days time, Santiago would transform into the wind. Santiago freaks out because, you know, he can't do that, but the alchemist tells him that he has to believe in himself. Three days later, Santiago stands on a cliff looking outward into the desert. He collects himself only for the desert to start talking to him. Oh god. But unfazed, he talks to the desert, asking him to turn him into the wind. But the desert is like, no can do, you have to talk to the wind. So he talks to the wind and it's like, don't know if I can do that, we're literally made of different compositions. But you can do anything with the power of love and determination. Okay, then you might want to talk to the sun. Turns out, becoming the wind is a bureaucratic process. Who knew? So Santiago talks to the sun, only to be told to talk to the hand that wrote all. 
He talks through prayer, realizing that the soul of God is his own soul and that he can perform miracles. And with this revelation, he turns himself into the wind. Just like that. So with this earth-shattering performance, they continue onward and arrive at the Coptic Monastery, where they part ways. And Santiago, not long after, arrives at the pyramids, where he is abruptly attacked by two refugees for his treasure. However, to the shock of everyone, the treasure was nowhere to be found. The refugees beat him up and Santiago gets one final vision of the treasure. He tells the refugees and one of them says, Yeah right, I had a dream where there was a treasure under a church and sycamore tree in Spain. But even I know I won't be stupid enough to go look for it. Honestly, reasonable enough. But what the refugee didn't know was that Santiago had realized where the treasure was. Which I gotta say, must be very frustrating considering where it is. After an unknown amount of time, Santiago arrives at the church where he started his journey in Andalusia and goes through the tree where he digs up a massive chest of gold and jewels. He puts the two stones in the chest and after giving one tenth of the treasure to the gypsy woman, he heads back to Al Fayum to return to his wife. The end. It was really hard to write this section of the video since I myself am a biased source. At the time I didn't like the story for its questionable plot points. But after looking back at it now, this is what I have to say about it. One of the main points of The Alchemist is to follow your dreams. And by that sense, I think the book did a pretty good job at making the lesson present in the book. I also love how even in a 200 page book, the story had enough time to flesh out the backstories of its characters. A boy seeking adventure a jaded merchant past his prime, and a young Englishman who seeks greatness. But do I think The Alchemist is a good book? No. I'm gonna have to agree with my past self over the fact that this is a pretty weird book, and there were a lot of things that I felt rushed or unused, like the Moorish girl at the beginning. I also found it unsettling that Santiago married the girl he just met out of impulse. I would say more, but I think my classmates would say it better than I ever could. So in the end, I'm giving this book a respectable 5 out of 10. But that was my opinion. I know I mentioned how my classmates didn't like the book, but to actually drive it home, here's what they wrote. I also said anytime there was a bleep, so I'm just going to replace that with a dial tone. Anyway, tasted weird, a bit dry, could have used some more salt, 4 out of 10 would eat again, 10 out of 10 would burn, negative 10 out of 10 would read again. The bizarre events and lackluster characters add to make this book feel odd and random. I give this book a 2 out of 10. This book is like trying to play a broken game. It makes me want to kill something. This book was a little confusing and it kind of felt like it had no meaning. Santiago is ugly. This book can eat and die. The Alchemist. Yikes. So, yeah. Thanks for watching this video, this was my first full animation. It was a lot of fun to make, don't expect me to make more book reviews, this was mainly just for fun. I might do a video on my favorite book of all time, but who knows. Anyway, that's all from me. Bye!